Um, this is the time of the year, and sorry, the week. What am I talking about? Time of the week in which we talk to um, our regular columnist and commentator, Hilary Colbert, who is not in New Zealand, as I understand it. Where are you, Hilary? I'm in Broadbeach. Where's that? It's um, just uh, the other side of Surface Paradise. Australia. Oh, okay. So you've gone, you've gone into the Gold Coast slums, have you? Well, if you can call, you know, 37 <laughs> floors up in, in a very nice apartment to slum. <laughs> you're just jealous, Michael. I am, because you're, it's, it's warm, it's sunny, uh, food's cheaper, um, there are lots of nice people around. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, there's, um, there's something interesting, there's a couple of interesting things happening over here at the moment, but I thought we might sort of touch on them because they touch on our stuff. Um, the some people will be aware that there's the, this referendum coming up in Australia about the voice. The voice, it. yep. And it's not that TV program. It's um, the idea is to give Aboriginal people um, a voice in Parliament for them to be able to sort of form a board of some description and and feed in their views. That's the benign end of it. Um, but why it's interesting to me is that the naysayers are very concerned that it will become some sort of treaty arrangement like ours, mm. and they very much don't care for ours. Um, and it's been handled, as it happens, much better than like the Brexit vote in Britain, because we were over in the UK when that happened too. And it took them till about four days before the vote to realise that it might not go the way they thought, um, which was, you know, they couldn't do anything about it at the end of the day, um, so they ended up leaving. In Australia, it must have seemed like a good thing to the Prime Minister Albanese a year ago because 70% of the people were in favour of it, round about that. Come about April this year, the graphs started to converge and come about April this year, and I don't know what happened about then, um, it started going not just downhill a wee bit, but downhill quite steeply. And it's now, if you voted today and leaving out the undecided, it would be that it wouldn't go through. It has to go through the whole place and it has to go through individually. But they, it still hasn't got a date for it, Yes, that's and, remarkable. Yeah, and um, Albanese is very keen, and now he's sort of between a rock and a hard place because the opposition have said, look, why don't you just take a step backwards and maybe it, there's another way of doing this. And he can't now. He has to go ahead with it. He's saying this is the one chance in a, you know, for the rest of any of the existence of Australia to do this. And he's absolutely wedded to it and things. And it's going to start cranking up with lots of money, There's lots of money in people's war chests and the government, of course, has got any amount. Um, but they're taking it really seriously and they realise that the people have turned and they don't know quite what to do about it. But, but it's a very interesting thing to watch them grapple with how they allow an Indigenous voice in parliamentary systems. Indeed. Um, oh, we talked about this yesterday. I actually gave the most recent polls that the Australian had published yesterday, um, Hillary. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, well, you I, would have seen them, them converging, just crossing. Well, yes. And, 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 and the other yeah. thing that I noted yesterday, uh, and the Australian poll had done magnificently, was break it down into socioeconomic um, income groups. And um, what it showed was that the more money you made, the more likely you were to be in favour of the voice and the less money you earned, particularly those who earned under $50,000 a year, were the most resolutely opposed uh, to the voice. And, and women less keen, I think I saw. Uh, yes, I think that's right. But certainly that, that might have been also related yeah. to the income um, issue as well. But it's sort of, you know, it's the old story about um, 
if somebody gets an advantage. It's, we were talking yesterday about Prezi cards. Remember you show, you sent me that about the Prezi cards? Yes. And yes. I um, interviewed Russell Garbutt, who'd written the letter right. that you sent to me um, yes. yesterday on the show. And it's the sort of, the people who get most offended at that aren't the Liberals earning $200,000 a year sitting in Wellington. They are the people earning $20,000 a year sitting in South Dunedin because they don't understand why the next door neighbour is getting access to something on the basis of their ethnicity that they're denied, yet, with all due respect, they're in the same straightened financial circumstances. Yes. So? Yes, it, 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 when it matters more to you, if you're waiting for um, something that you need that the government would usually provide in some sort of on a list or somewhere, you particularly don't like people going ahead of you in the queue, do you? No. That's what it amounts to. Well, but yeah, you're, exactly. That's what it feels like if you're standing in the queue. And if you've got enough money not to be in the queue, then it just doesn't affect you. Correct. And that's why you can be so, so benign about giving away stuff that's not, never going to affect you anyhow, because it's not. You're always yeah. insulated by your income and your assets. Yeah. So it's just interesting watching <laughs> that the really start getting in, involved in this. Because I think they woke up one morning in April and realised that they should have a look at it, or they actually. Um, just clarify for oh. me, will you? Does the referendum need to be passed by every state or three quarters yes, of the it does. Is every no, state? No, absolutely every state. And that it, that seems very unlikely because the three most popular states in some polls suggest that they're not going to do it, but five out of six, is it what? All but one, I think. Um, the, the yes vote is not winning in at the moment. So, oh, um, but no, it has to be everyone. Well, it's, it's interesting here because I'm reading now about the Australian Constitution. It says the Australian Constitution can only be altered by referendum. In a referendum, all Australians of voting age, yes or no, for the proposed changes to succeed a majority of voters nationwide and a majority of states, four out of That's six, right. yeah. must approve the change. Not all of them, four oh, out of okay. six. Okay, okay. well, what I was hearing on, I thought I was hearing on TV that was that it was every state. Um, to win every state. But so that, so you'll, if there's, you'll have it in front of you. If that's, well, I'm, I'm just looking right now at the, what am I looking at? Um, the Australian Human Rights Commission website. So one would assume that they've got that right. Um, yeah, mind you, that yeah. it is the Human Rights Commission. Uh, but I'm just thinking, Hillary, it's six states. That's West Australia, who are opposed, South Australia, who are in favour, New South Wales, which I think is 50-50, Victoria is in favour... Yeah. Queensland is resolutely opposed, and Tasmania, as I understand, is opposed. There's no vote for the Northern Territory, and there's no vote for ACT, obviously, um, as states. Yeah, yeah. well, ACT, of course, isn't, yeah. The Australian Capital Territory. Yep. And I think yeah. the Northern Territory is the Northern Territory, isn't it, because it's not a state. Yeah. Yes. Does that mean they just don't get a vote on anything national? Well, I don't know. I assume they can vote on the referendum, but it, they're, they're, it doesn't, they're not taken into... They, I, they must be allowed to vote, just like you'd be able to vote if you were living in Canberra. But I guess it's just that when it comes to having your vote counted twice, once for the national referendum and once for your state referendum, there isn't a state yeah. referendum. Yeah. Um, but... Anyhow, uh, so what did yeah. I say? Anyway. Uh, West Australia was opposed, well, yeah. South Australia in favour, New South Wales, it's 50-50, Victoria favour, Queenstown oppo uh, Queensland opposed, Tasmania opposed. Tasmania opposed. Yeah, so you're right. It won't, and the, mm. Yeah, and, and so anyway, I just think it's all quite interesting there and a more currently in a more grown-up fashion actually thinking this is a thing and getting in amongst it, and something that started off 70% for, in a sort of a bit of a no-brainer from a government point of view, just isn't anymore. Can I ask a question of you, since you're over in Australia at the moment, obviously talking to people about this, because I imagine it's, it is a t an issue of, of interest for a lot of people over there. Um, do you get a perception of how New Zealanders, because we've got 770,000 New Zealanders now living permanently in Australia, how New Zealanders would vote on that issue? 
who are living in Australia? Uh, I would guess, uh, completely perception-wise, I would guess that they're not particularly keen. I mean, they're, they're the ones who left Australia, left uh, New Zealand, left New Zealand because they didn't, like if they were Maori and left New Zealand, they left thinking that they're better off in a country that doesn't favour them. Mm. I mean, doesn't have any um, way of... Um, it feels like the um, better off ones who aren't affected by it that have a liberal sort of approach. And so if they happen to be from New Zealand early on, but the standard people, you know, builders, tradespeople, nurses, whatever... I don't get the feeling that they're keen. No. From New Zealand. No. Well, we've got, we, we see where it goes, don't we? In a funny sort of way. Yes. Yeah. We see how it all turns out. Yeah. And it sort of feeds in partly to the, this week's Looney Tunes files, because I gather from what you're saying that um, although you um, can't threaten to do damage to people or anything like that, you are allowed to say that some of their ideas are Looney Tunes. Um <laughs> The the thing that you were talking to Russell Garbett about yesterday um, is permeating all over the place now, and it's um, it, it would disturb more people if more people knew about it. And good on Russell for drawing it to our attention. Mm. The idea of race based treats um, and the idea that you wouldn't appreciate something like education or health care unless somebody bribed you into turning up. And you can understand schools have forever occasionally had teachers and things who pick up kids on their way to school to make sure they get there or to help them get there or whatever, those sorts of things. And that's a really benign and positive way of encouraging people to get involved in their education and stuff with those barriers in their way. Once you start doing that, however, with race-based stuff, it's sort of way out there in the loony, loony but more dangerous than that department, I think. Um, I was just thinking actually on that last night also. Um, I was looking at Scandinavia and I was looking at Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, who we like to sort of compare ourselves with and who are regarded as progressive economies uh, for a variety of reasons. They have high taxation, but they also have high state involvement, and there's sort of a general consensus in those countries, sort of a general consensus. But the thing that they don't have, any of them, is an indigenous people. So they don't have to have worry about, do they, that? They don't, they don't have any cultural scrap over the right of indigenous no. because they are indigenous. They're Norwegians, they're Swedes, they're Finns. Yeah. They're Finns. Um, they belong there, they've yeah. always belonged there. Um, and it, it gets an enormous advantage because it seems that the West, yeah. uh, particularly in the New Zealands and Australias, but in other places as well, Canada would be a good example of that, is having this problem now, an historic problem that it's created for itself in modern times by sort of feeling all guilty about what happened 200, 300 years ago. What they do have over in the Scandinavian countries is that they've been grappling with this immigration. <coughs> yes. But they bring new people in who yeah. aren't. And their relationship with immigrants, refugees, whatever. And that um, has they've been struggling with. And the age-old struggle with democracy, being allowed to do what you want. And then Islamists saying, how dare you, Sweden, I think it was, let people oh, burn, so burn the Quran. our book. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and so there, it's the newcomers that they're struggling with how to deal with, not, mm. the, not the earlier people. Yes, and but, that, but they, the, the good thing is my, the average Swede doesn't need to feel guilty, whereas the average white New Zealander no. or a white Australian has been made to feel such for the deeds of their ancestors your ago. 
Yeah, hey, good luck there, Michael, because I'm not. <laughs> yes, but your children and grandchildren might be because they'll be indoctrinated to have been so once they study their compulsory uh, New Zealand history curriculum. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to teach them that they're fabulous, which I have been. Yeah. And um, then I'm going to say don't get involved in a pretense of thinking that you're guilty and bad and then going and doing what you're going to do anyway. Mm because the hypocrisy is really not helpful. What we've got uh, in that um, bribery and sort of things, apparently Doc, I don't know whether you've picked this up, but Doc, I'm told, has been paying people, giving people a bonus of $2,500 for signing up to, I don't know whether you have to attend, signing up to a Maori language course. Yes, Yes, you brought this to my attention. Carry on, please. Yeah, they've um, they've acknowledged the department that they have no need to be able to speak Maori. You know, there's no, and in fact, I presume they pay people like the regional council and things do to present the Maori position and things, and present Maori words and present whatever it is. So they acknowledge they have no need for Maori language in their offices on a professional basis. But they are paying staff to sign up for Maori language courses. I mean, really? Mm. Mm. How about paying them for being something to do with conservation? Or? Mm. <laughs> Goodness me. Uh, yes, I mean, they don't need to speak Maori as part of their job. It make, doesn't make them any better or competent, but you'll pay $2,500 more if you learn the Maori language, courtesy of the New Zealand taxpayer. It's just absolute rubbish. Yeah, no, I don't think you even have to learn it. I think you have to go to oh, you've sign, got to up go for a course. sign up for a course, do you? So I, I, can, don't, I have no reason to believe that they have to actually have achieved anything. Mm. Although they will presumably turn up in the statistics if they go along to the course as people who now speak Maori. Mm. But I don't think there's a, an achievement, as there isn't for most things, objective thing. And the other sort of Looney Tunes area, um, I mean, as I say, Looney Tunes and somewhat dangerous, that lot of things are. But the other Looney Tunes thing that I noticed in the last week was this um, dental thing. The, so the this is where I policy. impose the wealth tax so I can give free dental care to every New Zealander? Yes. Now, the, we, we know about the politics of envy and that you shouldn't be rich enough, you know, for me to be sitting in an apartment in Broad Beach and so I ought to be paying for New Zealanders more taxes and things. I mean, I get all that. Um, I get the politics of envy and why it's there. Um but the Greens are pretending that isn't what they're doing, but they're just saying it's fair and equitable if people who have more, and this isn't an income tax, it's a wealth tax, pay for dental care. And you can argue about whether that's good or bad. I don't know why you'd pick on dental care particularly, because once you get taxpayers' money paying into it, it, it just disappears into... It's the, there are does in the event. It turns into one big slush fund. Um, so whether or not you think it's a good idea, um, my daughter went down to A&E recently, a couple of days ago, to wonder she's not still there. Um, there was no queue, queue, there was nobody there, there was um, no queues. Um, after the first two hours, they started saying the average time to wait was four to six hours or something. Um, she was there 12 hours later before they'd done anything, which in the event was an antibiotic thing and they could have just sorted out at the beginning. But the point of that story is that do the Greens actually for a moment believe they could find the people to provide dental care for a whole lot more people in New Zealand? Just loony. Mm. We can't get a medical system working. Mm. Why would we think we can get dentists? And I don't believe that they're so stupid that they think somehow they would magic their way through providing a whole lot of dentists when they can't provide basic health care. Mm. 
not objecting to the idea no, of... No, yeah, a, 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 absolute there. point. Yeah, uh, yeah, you make the point well. Yes, they, they wouldn't have the facility to do so anyhow. Let alone, and uh, as I was commenting on this yesterday too, Hilary, um, the reality is that the way in which the Greens have got it structured with their wealth tax, which is $2 million in assets for a single person, $4 million for you and your husband, uh, assets and income, um, it's so easy to divest that into a variety of um, different uh, financial uh, devices, if you like. But it's also a lot easier to leave New Zealand, isn't it? I was going to say, sitting here, one of the things I did as soon as I arrived was go and see the bank because I wanted to do some things to do with banks. There's nothing stopping me shift any amount over $2 million or anything, whatever, to Australia. Mm. Mm. Even with, I mean, you know, here's a strange fund in America, rather large, so I shouldn't call them strange, wanting to invest some money in New Zealand and if only they knew the idea of going into partnership with the New Zealand government's got to be up there with the Looney Tunes as well. Never go into partnership with particularly the New Zealand government. That would be a really stupid thing to do. Oh, well, BlackRock's done that today. Uh, New Zealand, That's the world... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah. mean... Oh, well, um, I can't believe they've gone into partnership. Earlier. All they've done is they've said that they'll raise... They, they're not, they, they said they'll raise $2 billion for various ventures. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what BlackRock's clearly after is to make a profit. Otherwise, you don't invest unless you make a profit. And if I can get some intellectual property while I'm at it, good, I'll do that too. I mean, that's just what investment yeah. banks do. But they'll have reasons to, for bring money into New Zealand if they do. And, in fact, pension funds and things um, want more investments in the right places you might have seen recently the Invercargill radiologists or somebody, a couple of them have left and said, we're not getting paid properly for this sort of stuff. And the, it's the people who own the lab, it isn't Southern Lab, whoever it is, are just out there to make a profit and things. And it turns out it's owned by Kiwi Saver Fund and a Canadian, I think it is, pension fund. Mm. So they will invest in New Zealand if... If there's money to be made, exactly. Just like I don't have to, Mm. if I don't want to. Well, if you're going to be taxed for it, if you're going to be taxed for your savings, for your enterprise, for your initiative, for your good husbandry, essentially, of financial resources, you're just simply being a good financial husband, if you like, make sure that you are not going to be taxed. Yeah, whereas income tax is a different thing than wealth tax. That's right. So... um, and no. I, I could choose to make income here, there, or different places in some ways, but the actual capital is really mobile. Can I ask you it's the other another question yeah. that you're over in Australia at the moment? Um, nevertheless, despite the fact that the voice um, approval is sort of going south, I think that's the right way, yeah, it's the right, Nicola, on it, um, okay. Albanese and the Labor government are still, according to the opinion polls over there, um, if there was an election tomorrow, would would easily do it. Is there something wrong with the Liberal Party over there? Um, I think that's changing. As we speak, yesterday there was two wee whoopsies in the Labor, one in Queensland, where <coughs> somebody turned out that they had said this new building project of some description was going to cost $7 million or something, and they, I think they'd effectively done a press release and did a it's finally got off the ground and things and it had turned out that it was now costing 11 million or whatever um, billions more um, and they had taken the now price out of the press release and out of the things they were saying and he's in quite a bit of bother because he's saying oh yeah well it, it was you know that was the money set aside and it's all fine but it just, um, when we finally signed it, we hadn't quite signed it when we put that out. And they've been caught out because they had signed it. So they were just lying. So that's happening here. There's, he's scrambling around because it's serious money involved. And then down in New South Wales or something, is it? There's a Labour Party guy who's... Oh, he's resigned because of... Um, uh, resigned. He, yeah. he, he was a minister and he resigned because, as I remember, he owned a lot of property, he and his family and his wife's family, 
um, which he had, um, which would have gained or directly benefited from his role and his decisions, but hadn't actually bothered to declare it um, in the register of interests at all. In fact, his wife had changed her name so he didn't have to. Um, it's a bit like um, Michael Wood and the shares, except a lot more corrupt yeah. and a lot more money involved. Yeah. Well, that wasn't even the one I was thinking of. The one I was thinking of was a, um, a suggestion that he'd done something sexual with a oh, staffer or something. Right. <laughs> well, as you do. But, yeah. As you do. But, uh, For Pete's sake, what's not, gone wrong? Not, not now you don't. <laughs> yeah. um, whatever not, happened to consenting yeah. adults? Eh? Whatever happened to that? I don't think they. I don't think those two words go together anymore. No, they don't, do they? There's a whole idea that um, if you are younger and not as wealthy as the other person, you can't possibly give consent to sexual relations. It's bizarre. Yes. I don't. I don't get it. Certainly not nine years later. When, quite frankly, most people, whatever they'd been doing nine years ago, if they were a bit busy out there, would have no defence because they had, would have no particular recollection of that particular evening. How many marriages would you have to break up in New Zealand now as a consequence of an, um, a power structure relationship at work being made horizontal, eh? Seriously. Yeah, well, you're more of an expert on that than <laughs> Michael, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot. Now yeah. you married your your childhood sweetheart. I remember that now. Yes, yes. You couldn't I possibly, I just, uh, you know, admit to I any any awareness. Period, <laughs> 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 and one uh, thought, not on this interesting topic though it is, is that they have started talking here, and I don't know whether. I presume other people are picking it up too, and it must be happening all over the world. Greta, I was watching Sky News last night, and they were really raising Greta Thorberg and co, because she's just pulled out of a Edinburgh climate change thing because one of the sponsors was somebody who'd driven a car once or something, I don't know. Um, but the comment made was, why are these people, they're actually religious zealots, Yes. The climate change. Thing. Yeah, she's pulled and out of the Edinburgh talk- Book Festival. Yeah. Well, they were also talking about the Gute- Who's the head of UN? Oh, Guterres. Whatever. Yeah, Antonio Guterres. Guterres. Yeah. Yeah, who was saying that we haven't any longer got global warming. We've got world burning or something. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And this, this guy was saying this has turned into a, you know, vengeful God sort of speech and I think it's useful to listen to it. I've been thinking that for a while that it's like having a vengeful God and if you look at some of the things that um, the Greens worldwide and other people are saying they want us to be punished for doing bad things yes no that's yeah. the whole point of it we're supposed to feel guilty we're supposed to feel bad we're supposed to be punished and we're going to be punished by the world boiling it's sort of Hellfire and brimstone. Yes, you're right. I mean, not only are they New Zealots, but they are cult leaders as well. And uh, yeah. they expect slavish obedience to their particular moral code. And if you transgress their moral code, you are punished and cauterized and criticized for doing so. Um, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's, and, a really, it's a really good way to finish our conversation today. Thank you for yeah. raising that. That's an, <laughs> that's an image that I guess um, I will now carry with me for the rest of the day, but you won't because you're in a nice, sunny, perfectly warm <laughs> place. <laughs> Go well. Look after yourself. Okay, thanks. That's Hilary Calvert from the Gold Coast. Lucky woman. Um, yes, Greta Thunberg uh, pulled out an Edinburgh Book Festival earlier this week. She did so... Um, he um, he did so on the basis that uh, she did so on the basis that one of the investors of the book festival um, or one of the sponsors of it had an investment in fossil fuels, and so um, she's pulled out. As a climate change activist, she said, "I cannot attend an event which receives sponsorship from these people, Bailey Gifford, who invest heavily in the fossil fuel industry." 
And she said, greenwashing efforts by the fossil fuel industry, including the sponsorship of cultural events, allow them to keep the social license to continue operating. I cannot and do not want to be associated with events that accept this kind of sponsorship. Well, good luck, honey, going to anything. 